Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 20 of the Nordcast. I'm your host here, Nordic97. Now, I know that last episode I said it was episode 20, but numbers are hard. Uh, last episode was episode 19. This episode is episode 20. So, uh, we have no Carter today. Um, it's just me and Jack. How you doing, Jack? Doing good. How about yourself? Um, I'm sick again, man. Um, Carter is in Hawaii, or he's leaving Hawaii today. Uh, and this is the only day that we're available to record, so we're just riding it without our Jets fan today. And it's kind of the worst episode for him to miss because his team is in an inter- interesting spot right now, uh, 100%. So we're going to start off with, and we're recording this, by the way, on Wednesday, April 5th, uh, 2023. Thought I'd throw that in here um, because there's some very important games going on with the Western Conference wildcard race. And this game between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Calgary Flames could be a game that when the Flames, you know, they miss the playoffs, this could be the game that they look at and say, this was the game that made us miss. Um, The Flames lost 4-3 to to the Chicago Blackhawks, so I don't know how Jack feels about this, but we'll get into it in a little bit to see how he feels. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's nice to win one every once in a while. Um, Yeah. Hopefully, uh, it's the last one of the season. Obviously, I am rooting for uh, Bedard at this point. Um, but yeah, for the Flames' uh, perspective of this, it's that's a game you have to win. You're playing the 32nd team in the league in the Blackhawks, and you go out and you lose four to two or four to three. Sorry, I was four to two at one point. And um, I feel like the Hawks just kind of controlled this whole game. I I watched it, and um, I mean, just just comparing the two rosters. This game should have been a blowout. Flames should have won this game easily. Um, but yeah, we just saw we saw the Blackhawks offense just kind of run all over the Flames defense and Markstrom. Uh Markstrom did not look comfortable at all in net uh from the start. And yeah, this is a game for the Flames where uh you have to win this. And uh yeah, like you said, looking back, if they if they uh miss the wild card here, uh it's gonna be pretty disappointing for them. I would like to say that they're not 32nd anymore, the Blackhawks. They are Yeah, they moved up to what, 30th? But yeah, they moved up to 30th. Previously though, they were at 53 points, and honestly, if they just kept losing for the rest of the year, they probably they likely would have finished last unless if something happened. Um, but this win also could determine whether or not they get Bedard, which is also kind of funny, so like Arguably, both teams lost here. That's that's the funny part. But anyways. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, getting into the period by period, um, Athens CU made it 1-0. Uh, Tyler DeFoley, who has five goals in his last five games, tied it up after that. Uh, and then Jujar Kara made it 2-1 to one, uh, heading into the second period. In the second, there was only one goal, and it was from Noah Hannafin. So it's tied 2-2 two two heading into the third period. Calgary has the opportunity to cook up whatever they want here against Chicago. They're not a good team, no offense, but they should be beating a team like Chicago. And then Athens CU gets a second of the night. Uh, Wagner scores to make it four to two, and then Backlund makes it four to three, four to three late. And as I said, you know you got to win against these teams. Like, and I was like thinking, like, what are they doing? Like, they need to yeah. win this game. That was a must win. Now, I'm not saying that they're out of it just yet. They're not. They're definitely still in it, and. Realistically, when you actually look at their schedule, they play easier teams. However, who knows if the same thing could happen as what happened last night? Like, it's just honestly, it's ridiculous to me. And you're right, you brought up Markstrom. He wasn't that comfortable in the game. And honestly, it really was the goaltending. Uh, the Flames have a 0.872 save percentage between both Markstrom and Vladar uh, since the All Star game, which is brutal, uh, 100%. Um, honestly, though, I am thinking, like, if they get into the playoffs, realistically, what are they going to do? I mean, they're playing probably either the Vegas Golden Knights or the Dallas Stars or the Minnesota Wild. I'm not sure who leads first in the Central. I know it's close, but um, realistically, what are they really going to do, to be honest, if, like, that type of stuff happens? And then Nazem Kadri too, just looked like he didn't care. I didn't watch the game, so I have really no idea. But Flames fans have been saying that um, Kadri just didn't look like – didn't look – didn't look all that in that game against the Blackhawks. And it's definitely going to hurt them. Now, when you look at the remaining games for both Calgary and Winnipeg, as I said, um, Calgary has an easier schedule. Even though Winnipeg also has an easier schedule, 
Uh, Calgary with uh, four games left, including this game tonight against Winnipeg. Um, they play Vancouver, who's below the playoff line, Nashville, who's below the playoff line, and San Jose, who's below the playoff line. So those are three teams below the playoff line. If you win all three of those, um, I'm not sure if they're in the playoffs. If you win all four, I believe you are. If Winnipeg loses out. But Winnipeg also has a fairly simple schedule, too. Um, and they're really going to have to either win tonight versus the Jets or they're going to have to pray that Nashville or San Jose beats them um, as well as that, too. And then they also play the Minnesota Wild and the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, so really, those two teams are what separates the Jets uh, from the Flames in an easier schedule. So we'll see. But, you know, I look at, you know, like the series and honestly, I feel like Winnipeg's going to win because Calgary's coming off of a back to back. And as well as that, too, Markstrom starting again. Um, yeah. so we're playing another game um, after being kind of embarrassed last night by the Blackhawks. And the Flames are really going to have to step it up here if they want to um, 100%, you know, make the playoffs. So I'll ask you this question, Jack, since you're the only one here. Uh, do you think that the Flames or the Jets will make the playoffs? Which one do you think will make it? I think the Jets get in the Flames don't. You think so? Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty good – um scenario there I, de- I i think that's the most realistic thing if calgary won last night then i would have been saying eh, no yeah exactly yeah. probably calgary at that rate but now it just doesn't look good for him uh, yeah no. and <laughs> i'd like to mention too that nashville isn't far behind them so mm-hmm. uh yeah anyways moving on from that we're going to talk about devon levi we got a surprise guest. Um, we had to pause for a second, but look who's here. It's Carter. How you doing, Carter? I'm doing fantastic. Chilling, oh. chilling and chilling in Hawaii. So oh. not a lot of complaints here. Did you eat any good food? Is there any good food there? Oh yeah. There's you always get good food. Love to see it. All right. So Carter decided to join us for our Devon Levi talk. Because why not? Um Carter's been I tried and- tried to join for the Jets talk, but uh they went too fast. So just missed it. I'm glad that I'm glad that he's here though, because he has spoken very vocally about um, you know, Devon Levi in previous podcasts. But Devon Levi made his NHL debut uh, about on last Friday against the New York Rangers. Uh, and he played very well. Uh, and then he also played the other night against the Florida Panthers and also played very good. Uh his stats currently stand at a one one and oh record with saving 69 out of 72 shots. And he also has a 1.98 goals against average and a 0.942 save percentage. So he has looked really good for the Buffalo Sabres 100%. And overall, I just, it makes me really excited because this was one of the issues that Buffalo had when you were looking at them. Oh, it's their goaltending 100%. That was, that was the biggest problem. But now, Devon Levi seems to have solved that. So Carter, I'm going to let you talk about um, Devon Levi, and I'm going to ask oh, you this question because okay. you have said it. Is Devon Levi better than Spencer Knight? Uh, well, I'll start off by saying that Devon Levi has truly shown why he was one of the best goaltenders in college hockey this season, and I do think that he is going to end up having a way better career than Spencer Knight. I will say that, and I will back that up a uh, hundred times out of a hundred. Um, I truly believe that Devon Levi is the future. Of, of the Buffalo Sabres. I think when you look at a young team like that, having a young superstar goaltender is really key to, um, for your team's success. And it's not like he's like mediocre, like good for a young player. He's like NHL top good so far from what we've seen from his two games. So um, I definitely like the direction that he's headed. Um, and yeah, I do think he is, uh, he's better than Spencer Knight. What do you think, Jack? Do you think he's better than Spencer Knight? I think it's too early to tell, but obviously Knight hasn't been the best. Uh, but Levi, I don't think he has to do much to prove that he's better. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say better just yet. But I think he he will get there for sure. Yeah, I think Carter's kind of jumping the gun here. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Listen, Knight may have the gold medal, 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 Jesus, medal over Devin Levi, but it doesn't matter if you're performing like that on the NHL stage. It's still unbelievable the ironic thing is too is that he was originally a part of the florida panthers and then in that sam reinhardt trade um he was dealt to florida along with a first round pick uh which i don't know exactly who they picked with that it wasn't 
I think it might have been Ostland. I'm not entirely too sure, though. I don't think it was, actually. I'm probably wrong. I have no clue. I shouldn't try not it. Sure. Yes, but anyways. Uh, yeah, Devon Levi's look very good. Uh, and I'm just I'm just loving, like, watching him. And I don't know. I doubt the Sabres will make the playoffs. It's very unlikely now. It's between the Islanders, Florida, and, the, and um, Pittsburgh. Um, but, yeah, Buffalo definitely indicating in these last couple of games that they could have a very bright future here in that. Uh, but, of course, we don't want to jump the gun just yet, but uh, we'll see. So, Carter, thank you for coming on for a little bit. We appreciate it. Of course. Any- uh, I hope that my I hope that my Jets can get the win tonight. Yeah. So I, gonna- I know I missed the Jets segment, but I just gotta say, like, uh, if we don't if we don't win this game, Chicago, Jack, I thank you so much. Thank oh, you, yeah, Team yeah. Chicago Blackhawks, <laughs> for coming in clutch last night. I got night. you, got you. Um, I'm gonna I'll say this. I think whoever wins this game between Calgary and Winnipeg will take the second wild card spot. Even though the Jets have that two point lead in the game in hand, I think if Calgary wins, it's just gonna be a little bit of a momentum killer for the Winnipeg Jets here. So. Hopefully they can come out with a nice clean two points uh, tonight. Calgary also has an easier schedule than Winnipeg, so yeah, they do have that but game. Hey, against... They had an, they had an easier game last night, and look what happened. So true, they do have that game in hand, but it is against the Colorado Avalanche. So we'll see, we'll see. We're not going to jump the gun, uh, but anyways, we'll move into headlines now. I bet. Heading on into the headlines now, um, we got some clinched playoff spots to talk about. Uh, Colorado, Minnesota, Dallas, Los Angeles, Edmonton, and Tampa Bay have all clinched playoff spots. Uh, I feel like I am missing a few more. It's been a while since we filmed. Um, but, yeah, those are the teams that have lately clinched. Uh, the Bruins, they won the President's Trophy. Um, definitely um, a solid accomplishment. We'll see how it pans out in the playoffs because historically – uh, President's Trophy people don't have, or President's Trophy winners, not people, uh, don't have a good track record in the playoffs. But of course, we've been wrong before. Uh, Van- thirteen Hawks. True, 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 true. <laughs> um, Vancouver, St. Louis, Philadelphia, and Washington, uh, were all eliminated from the eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, since our last talk, and as well as that too, Washington is missing the playoffs for the first time since 2014 and only the third time since Ovechkin's become or has come into the NHL, which is absolutely unreal. Uh, it's, it's crazy to think that, but yeah, Washington may need a little bit of a retool, uh, but they need some young players. They got some good draft capital. They got some good younger players at the deadline. I'm kind of liking them a little bit so far, but we'll see um, what comes out of it. Um, Some like city news here, I guess um, Los Angeles and Arizona are apparently supposed to play in Australia. Uh, It'll likely be like a nighttime game or a very early morning game. Uh, So we'll see there because Australia is like the worst place for time zone. It's like, oh yeah, it's basically like where Carter is because where Carter is right now, it's like 10 in the morning for that. I think it's even, I think it's a few more hours back. So it's probably like three in the morning right there right now, if we're being honest, I'm probably wrong. Mm. And I'm not the one to talk about that. Uh, but anyways, uh, there is a game that would be like two hours behind me, one hour behind Jack. Uh, the Kings are playing the Sharks in Salt Lake City, Utah, so home of the Utah Jazz. Um, I would imagine it's in that arena. Uh, I've talked about before in TikTok saying that, oh, yeah, it's a good idea for them to potentially get a team in Salt Lake City. Um, and then as well as that, too, it's good for them to play in Salt Lake City as well. Uh, definitely really trying to grow the game in those non-hockey sectors. Um. Anyways, the last piece of news I have here is Philip Hedl has signed a four-year, $4.43 million contract. Uh, Philip Hedl has been very effective this season for the New York Rangers, has taken a big step on that third line. Uh, definitely a good signing there for the Rangers. Uh, we'll move into trending players, and then we'll get into the last topic of this video, which won't be too big of a one, but we'll talk about it. Uh, Connor Bedard is in our trending players for the Regina Pats. Um, Obviously, the CHL is in their playoffs, and the Regina Pats, Bedard's team, is playing the Saskatoon Blades, and they are up 2-1 to on them right now, and that's solely because of Connor Bedard, because in three games played, this guy has six goals, five assists for 11 points, um, really just proving that he is going to be that first overall pick, uh, and there's no doubt about it. Uh, and then the other trending player that I have, I don't have that many, it's Nathan McKinnon. Uh, he reached the first 100-point plateau 
um, of a single season in his NHL career. And he did that in 65 games played too. Uh, so over 10 games less than some NHLers, uh, which is kind of unreal when you think about it. And it goes to show that he is still a top player in the NHL. So to wrap up this podcast, and I'm sorry, we're going to have yet again another short one because Carter can't join us and me and Jack can't keep you guys entertained for more than 30 minutes. Just kidding. I can keep you entertained. I don't know about Jack, though. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, we're going to talk about a first-round matchup that was confirmed, and this is the only first-round matchup that has been confirmed so far, and it's Leafs versus Lightning. We're not going to go into like a full in-depth preview because this is not the podcast for that. Uh, we'll go into a more in-depth preview when we get all the rounds. Um, so definitely we'll get into that um, in a later podcast. But we do want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, so last year, of course, um, Tampa Bay won in seven games, four to three. Um, definitely this could be a different year. Toronto has the home ice advantage. But Tampa Bay has looked tired. And I want to put that in quotations. Tired. Um, over the course of the past couple of months, uh, it seems like. Because when you look at this team, they have played a lot of extra hockey. Uh, you add in, you know, 16 wins, you have to get in the playoffs. They won 32 plus 15. So that's about, um, what is that? I'm not good at math. I think that's 60, not 63. Um, 47, I believe. I'm, I'm probably wrong. Um, 47 games there. And then as well as that, too, you have to throw in the losses, so it's even more games. That's like almost a whole season of extra hockey. That's over yeah. half a year of just more hockey, and you're playing from – as well as that, too, you're playing from October to June. So that's about a six-month time period there, and then you only have about four months – or, sorry, another six months to recover when other teams are getting, you know, like sometimes seven, maybe even eight, maybe nine months – um, to fully like heal and recover. And it's obviously, of course, it's taken a toll on some of their injured players. Um, like this season, a lot of, a lot of their guys haven't played. Um, but yeah, they look tired. Um, they look tired down the stretch. Their guys look hurt. However, I will say this though, Andre Vasilevsky looks like he's getting back into mid season form. So I'm going to throw that in here. Uh, we'll see what comes of that, but obviously that is something to take into consideration. Um, as well when you're thinking about the Lightning. But as well as that, too, with the Leafs, voice crack, but with the Leafs, they very well could rebuild if if this happens. Maybe not rebuild, but go through a serious retool because Kyle Dubas, or maybe even above that, could potentially think we need to make a change here. So we'll Yeah, see. that could – I was just going to say that could include a guy like Tavares or um, Nylander uh, heading out, maybe getting some assets for that. Yeah, that doesn't I I it probably would be Nylander, realistically. Yeah. Um, but this is their year to win it. They got McCabe, they got Blay, they or Blay, they got um Lafferty, they got Ryan O'Reilly, so they got some good assets here at the deadline. Um, they're gonna have a solid team and Ryan O'Reilly's in fact returning returning, I believe, tomorrow versus the Boston Bruins. That game will probably already be done by the time this podcast is recorded. Um, but yeah, or released, not recorded, but yeah, honestly, this year it could be different, but this year we could see some um, very drastic effects um, depending on which team loses. So, Jack, from a perspective, a non-biased perspective, who do you think is going to win this one? I mean, this year I'm going to say the Leafs. Uh, last year I did say Tampa, but this year I'm going to say the Leafs. Um, I just think – this is a better team in general. Uh, throughout the regular season, I think they've been a better team in general. Um, I think Tampa's time is over, to be honest with you. Everyone's getting pretty old on that team. Cap space is getting very narrow for them. And the Leafs, uh, I just I just like what they have. Um, trade deadline, obviously huge. Like you mentioned, McCabe, Lafferty, O'Reilly. I like all those for them. And then you guys got, you got um, guys like uh, Matthews and Marner that just they – pretty much carry this team offensively and um they got four lines that can score three pairings that can shut you down and a solid goaltender so uh yeah just i i expect sorry i talked over you what are you saying yeah i, I just expect the leafs to win my fault that's the one thing i'm worried about um when i look at toronto the goaltending 
goaltending. I'm a little yeah. worried about that. I don't know if I'm trusting Sam Sonoff, but hey, he's looked solid. Uh, yeah, Matt he has. Murray also has a pretty good playoff track history, so I'll factor that into my answer. But yeah, I'm shit on it. Sorry, I cursed. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I want to say I want to say Leafs so bad. Who do you think they'll start? Who I they'll probably start Sam Sonoff unless Sam Sonoff, yeah. unless if Murray is a hundred percent by that playoff time, and as well as that too, he's also he should probably also play some games in the regular season before. Yeah, playoffs. So we'll that, see. Yeah, but, that, that's the thing. If if Sam Sonoff's struggling, you can just put Murray in. Yeah, so that's the biggest thing, but. I want to say Leafs so bad, but I'm honest. I don't know. I I want to. I I think I think this could be either team could win this series. Uh, this is the best year for Toronto to win it, though, in my honest opinion. Uh, and I think Tampa could really use the extra three months off. Although it would suck. Although that's not what they want. They want to chase a third cup. Um, I think it would definitely help them. It would allow their players to heal uh, and have a fully healthy team by that coming season. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, yeah, um, honestly, that's all I got. You got anything else? I got nothing else. All right. Well, that does it for us. Um, sorry for another short episode, but obviously, um, you know, no Carter in this one. Uh, but we did a good job, Jack. Good job. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, um, thank you all very much for watching and listening. I'm sorry if my throat sounds really messed up. I am not feeling too well. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys, or we will see you guys in the next podcast. Adios.